Hello everyone, Andy here, and welcome to the Mustang Mac E. So before I do get into the video, I've had this fantastic opportunity, a bit of a sort of lifetime opportunity here to actually have a car given to me for the weekend to see what I think about it and basically make a video of my choosing on the car. And it's from Evans Halshaw. The Ford dealership in Trafford is where I've been able to pick it up from. So a big thanks to Paul for letting me lend this car for the weekend. Now, there is a little bit of an elephant in the room here for me and my channel. I'm a big petrol head. You know, I've only ever owned petrol cars. I love the noise of a petrol car, especially normally aspirated one. <laughs> And I've always been one of these people who has actually been a bit against electric cars because I've, I've always been in no doubt that yes, they are faster and they're eco in the regards of, you know, they're cheaper to fill up and stuff like that. But for someone who loves to go out for a drive, an electric car never mentally did anything for me. And to be honest, just like Jeremy Clarkson once said when he was asked about owning an electric car, he says he'll never own an electric car because he just loves the sound of a V8. And I think I can massively relate to that. But I do think that I am gonna feel quite swayed by the fact that this is the Mustang Mach-E, and this is actually the premium one. It's the middle of the range one, the, the high spec one, the GT one, is the super, super fast one, which does like 0 to 60 in three seconds. But this one is no slow coach. It does it in five seconds. So for me, this is the fastest car that actually I've ever driven. So I can see that I'm probably gonna get a bit giddy with the actual power side of this car. But I'll just run off a few things that you get with the premium. So you get the 19 inch black machined alloy wheels, you get red calipers, adaptive LED Mustang signature headlamps, and I've got to admit, those lights at night time are fantastic. You get the black perforated full, I'm trying to say this right, Sensiso, Sensico trim with the red stitching. Again, I'll show that in detail, but it is very nice. Eight way power driver and passenger seats. So this has the optional dual motor. It's the faster, it's the larger capacity. So it says it'll do 300 plus miles, but um, the actual guy, Evan Telshaw, has said that, you know, it still does a good mileage. It'll probably do 280 miles on a full charge. I keep wanting to say full tank. It's got the power fold mirrors and puddle lights. I'll try and show now if I can the Mustang puddle lights when you sort of approach the car. So you don't even press anything. You just approach it with the fob and the puddle lights come on, which is quite a cool feature. And what is nice is the, if I'm pointing to it now, like all this kind of side cladding and the wheel arches are in gloss piano black, which is obviously a really nice sort of finish. So the actual power, so I know I've said the 0 to 60 is about five seconds, but the actual power is 332 horsepower. And also the torque in these electric cars is insane. Like literally, because there's like, it's weird to have no rev counter to look at to see where you are, because it doesn't matter. You just put your foot down and it's just instant power. It just feels like Rita Queen of Speed. That's the only way I can describe it. Right, let's go and have a look at it in closer detail. The first thing that actually caught my eye when I first saw this car in person, what I do like what the designers actually did with it was to subconsciously make the car look more like a coupe, make it look more lower than it is because what they've done is, is they've made, they've painted the top of the car here. It actually is lower than the roof line. So if you look side on, I mean, it's very um, appropriate with the dark background, but that is actually the physical sort of height of the car. But because the color of the paint against the black is, is sort of cut down, it gives the impression that it's a lower car. So that's quite a nice little touch. I quite like the aesthetics that they've actually done with that. Now, I do love the rear lights because to be honest, they do look very much like a Mustang's rear lights. It's quite hard not to like them. We've got the little camera there. If you can just about see there, we've got a little camera there at the front. And basically I'll show now, when you're actually reversing um, or parking the car, you've got like a 360 degree like drone 
bird's eye view of it, which is really cool. So as I mentioned, I do like the gloss blacks on here. I love a bit of gloss black. Everything on it is gloss black. Wing mirrors, roof, the trim. Some of the angles of it, like here, it does look nice and aggressive. And do you know what? If it didn't have stuff like the little green block showing it's electric, Sometimes I wouldn't have thought it's an electric car because some of them have like kind of really horrible bland fronts to them But because this kind of gives the impression that it's actually got like grills if that makes sense that actually I think it does look smart again I think the designers have done quite a nice trick there like an illusion of making the car Look like it's a sort of a lower profile car than it is having the gloss black trim kind of cutting into the bodywork there That's a nice touch and that's the thing, I'm kind of having to look at this as just a car in its own right, not a Mustang. I think personally what they should have done is as Ford should have actually just called it the Mach-E. Then I think it would have been completely alright in its own right. It's a full electric SUV car. It's just not quite a Mustang for me, I think, holding that name. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a really nice car. And I do think they've done a good job with the design of it, but it's... It's not a Mustang. Oh, now actually, before I do jump into the car, if you notice, there's no handles, which is really weird to sort of see a car with no handles on it. But obviously they've done that for aerodynamics to make it smoother, more eco, but I do love the way you open it. So if I just open the car, so you can see now it's illuminated, just press the button, and it's just this really nice, like, soft open. And then you've got this, like, little grab handle to open it up. And you are greeted with a very nice interior. It is really, really nice. I love these two displays. Look at them going away. Like, they're, they're really high quality. I mean, I think it's a 15 and a half inch tablet, which is huge. You know, that's bigger than our, like, iPads and stuff at home. So this is the home screen. We've got radio, phone, nav. And what's really cool is I love the, having this, like, bezel. It's got this really nice tactile, like, feel. So it changes with whatever function it is. So, for example, I've got the radio on now. So that adjusts the volume. But for example, if I was to go to start messing now with my seat, uh, with the heat, now I can start increasing or decreasing the heat. Let's go into the settings. This is actually the cool one because we've got whisper, seamless drive, calm and quiet. Active, feels pretty normal. And I say normal, it's still obviously got, you know, quite a lot of power, but it's a little bit more responsive. And then when you put it in untamed version, it's like no holes barred. It's just, if you start to put your foot down, it'll go. Propulsion sound. First of all, I love the fact that it's called propulsion sound. That's quite cool. But to be honest, I don't really tell the difference. The idea is it's supposed to fake a bit of noise inside the cabin. Um, we've got all sorts of things here ticked. Pre-collision assist. Ah, I did wonder that. I felt like now and again, it has felt like it wanted to apply a bit of brakes now and again. Let's just have a quick look at vehicle. This is like where you can control things like, look, global open and close on the windows. Wipers, courtesy wipe. <laughs> I'd like a courtesy wipe, please. Welcome lighting, that's probably all the jazz stuff that happens at the beginning, which is pretty cool. Uh, blah, 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 low battery, etc., etc. Instrument cluster dark, let's see what that does. Ooh, did you see that on the right? It changed it to white. Center display mode dark again. Ooh, that's really bright. That's way too bright. I feel like it's too distracting that for the road. But yeah, I definitely prefer the dark setting. I think it just sort of blends in a bit better with the dashboard. Uh, let's go to camera. Look at that. How cool is this? Look, can you see this? A car's gone past and it actually shows on this one. Now if I zoom, can I zoom in? <gasps> Ooh, I can zoom in. Uh, check surroundings. Ooh, look at that. So that's just a forward facing camera, like a three, like a bit of a 180 degree view. And that, you've got heated steering wheel, which honestly, feels so nice to have sketch what the hell is this oh oh my god how cool is this i'm gonna have to get my son to have a go at this he'll probably love it he can be the deciding factor is the is the car cool if he likes playing with this go on you color it right. in uh -huh. what do you like about the car um it's good boom, 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 boom. <laughs> It goes brum 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 brum. I like it because it's fast. <laughs> the steering wheel is seriously, seriously nice. Like, it is obviously, you know, it's quite a new car, so it's got that nice new Nappa leather feel. It's got the red stitching, as you can see, um, all on the seats, the rest of the interior. It's got a really nice, soft feeling to the leather on it as well. And it's a really nice size too. It's not big. Some steering wheels can be really big, and it's not tiny like some Peugeots. And this is funky as well. So just like the outside of the car, 
I've driven it a few times now and I've got completely used to it, but having the door handle here, so that is what opens the door. So yeah, it's like a, it's like a switch. It's quite cool, I quite like it. All the materials are nice, like literally leather, like soft touch, soft touch. Even this, this is all soft touch. The buttons all feel nice, they're like, they've got like this kind of like weight to them, but at the same time, like a nice little clicky with a soft touch feel to them. Again, all the materials here in the kind of center console bit are really, really nice. I do love this little dial here to obviously go between drive, neutral, reverse, and park. One thing I'm not a big fan of, but I get it with a lot of these new electric cars is an electric handbrake. Now, I don't know, I keep, when I first got in the car, I just kept wanting to do that. I kept wanting to actually put a handbrake on. So that did feel really, really weird to get used to. Um, I'm not a big fan of where the hazard is. I find that really counterintuitive because when I was sat here driving, for example, like someone let me out and I wanted to um, just sort of flash them to say thanks. I went, I was like this, like where the hell is the hazard thing? Uh, I was like looking on the tablet and I couldn't find it. It wasn't till like got to some lights and was able to stop and have a good look around. I was like, oh, it's, it's, it's down here. So it feels really weird because you've got like your hands in the wheel and normally you just do a quick little tap but you've actually got to go down and find it it's yeah not great it's really cool and um, if you've got one of these phones that charges wirelessly then yep yeah, it's got one of them there which is really really nice two huge cup holders which are great uh, and you've got USB-C and USB there and you've also got a couple around the back there something else that I really really like is Again, it's just the materials. So this has got, it reminds me of what my Alfa Romeo Mito used to have, is this kind of like fake carbon fiber, but it actually looks real. Um, I assume it isn't. Comment in the comments if actually it is real carbon fiber. I'm pretty sure it's not, um, but I do like the texture anyway. Just the different textures that are in here are really, really nice. The, um, I love this. You know what it feels like? It feels like a really expensive speaker. That's what it feels like, this material that is on here is so nice and it goes along the whole the whole thing but just looking at that i think that is so smart i love the way that they've integrated you see the line that runs through it i love that for the vents and it doesn't even disturb the line here when you're adjusting them that's just a nice little like you know thought out thing there now this does have the upgraded speaker system but yeah these seats are plush they feel really nice high quality they're not the most supportive of seats as you can see if i'm looking side on you know they're not got a lot of bolster but you know this isn't supposed to be like you know a track day race car but they've got enough support there's enough bolster in there so if you're having a bit of fun on the country roads which hopefully i will be doing very soon then um yeah they are up to the job and i love this huge panoramic roof just look at that the whole thing is a massive window to the sky. Look at that, that is awesome, I love that. Now I'll just jump out and just quickly show you something that I do like, one thing that is a benefit of electric cars is because they don't have all the gubbings underneath, is look at this, the flat floor that runs through at the back of the passengers, that is so, so cool. There is a lot of space there, like that's my seating position and there's loads of space, like if I get in, I've got nearly, nearly a full hand there in front loads and loads of space so that's my kids child seat in just while they're nipping out for the weekend in this car and his feet don't touch the passenger seat whereas in our sportage they do so that just shows you that extra length that is in this car look at all this light and view that you get i just love it look at the perspective as a passenger that is awesome let's open the boot and have a quick look it's got one of these fancy sort of soft open boots so you can feel really posh in the car park. So that's the battery cable there. You know, I'd say actually it's it's a decent sized boot. It's probably, I'd say not really any bigger than our Sportage's boot. And I think that is really big. I think the Sportage was actually one of these cars that had one of the bigger boots in its class. And it's also got one of these little posh, again, show everyone up in the car park. You press the button and just like Jarvis or Alfred, the car does it for you. Now something I haven't done yet is to open the as they call it, the frunk, the front trunk. And at first I wondered, what's this mean? Why does it say two times? Like, has it got two different bonnets to open? But basically you have to click it twice in order to open the front. I don't know if you'll hear it, but it has to open twice. So one, two. That is an odd feature. Comment below if you know why it does that. So let's have a look. This is where the engine's supposed to be, but instead, oh look. 
But no, in all seriousness, that is actually a good size of space to have. I am a little bit biased when it comes to not liking electric cars, but the benefits are is stuff like this. Like that's that's like a small, I'd say that's a small suitcase or a couple of rucksacks, extra space in the front of this car. Plus with the practicality of having more space in the back as well. I, I do like that, like I do think that, you know, compared to our family car, the Kia Sportage, I keep going back to that, but that's just because it is our car and it's quite a big practical car. This has more practicality. If this car was a third of the price, then it's probably something that, yeah, we would love to own. I can see why we would. But I, I am a petrol head and I do love the noise of an actual petrol engine. But right, I think we've spoke quite a lot now about the car from the outside and the inside. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get in and we're gonna do a bit of a point of view. So as if you're driving the car, I thought that might be quite cool. So foot on the brake, power on, get like a really cool little Mustang, a few little beeps and whistles. It's really weird because you can't hear anything. Let's just have it in normal active mode just to start with. So I'm parked like quite near a lot of cars. So let's just uh, see how I get on. See how cool is that? I love the 360 degree view. So let's see if I get close to the Fiesta. You can see it on the side mirror as well. Just put it in drive. Let's go. I love this steering wheel. It's got a bit of a sponginess to it. So come on, this is what you've been waiting for. Let's put it in untamed version. And let's have a look, 10 miles an hour. Put my foot down. Jesus. 45. <laughs> it was in like a couple of seconds. I mean, honestly, the best way to describe it when you put your foot down is if you've been to Alton Towers and you've been on Rita, and it's not just because of the speed, it's the fact that there's no engine sound. Ugh, oh, damn cyclists. Overtaking is not a problem in this car. Oh, it really does throw you into the back of the seat. A couple of ramblers. It kind of does take your breath a little bit away. It's that instant torque. You feel your body just getting pressed into the back of the seat. Whoa, that was so fast. Tell you what, it handles well. I do love still the, the, the noise of my car over this, I think, as a weekend blast. But for just sheer grunt, it's bloody good. Foot down again. Oh, it's so good. Oh, a little bit of a little bit of body roll just then on that corner. My ST is a lot better on the handling, that is for sure. That's the thing, you can't beat little cars like my Mark 6 Fiesta ST for country road blasts. <laughs> <laughs> There's no one behind me or anything like that. Right, I'll try and do it. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. And because it's obviously like an automatic, you don't have to do any gear changing. It's the fastest thing I've ever driven anyway. So I'm gonna wait and see. Ooh, it's saying ready. Now let's click it. So look at this. It is self-driving. If you can see, can you see my foot is up in the air? Hands out on the steering wheel. <laughs> it's driving itself. How cool is this? The car is driving itself and I can just, yeah. S weird but cool, but also feels kind of wrong. I'm doing 70. Is it, it is, look, it's slowing down. It's slowing down from the car in front. Ah, it's doing it itself. It's doing it, it's braking. It's braking, it's steering, it's doing everything. Right, I'm coming up to a roundabout, so I'm gonna take control again. So I'm just pressing this little button here, which is increasing it, saying it's 70. There we go, set to 70. No hands on the steering wheel. Feet, feet are off the pedals. Saying keep hands on the steering wheel, so I'll just put them back on again. But yeah, there you go. The car has automatically dropped itself to 60 as well when the speed changed, so I've not had to do anything. And okay, we are approaching a car in front and I can see the speedo has dropped now to 57, 56. It's keeping up with the car in front and I'm not doing anything. How, how cool is that? Comment below if you think you would actually be comfortable doing this. Put my foot down. 1001, 1002, 1003. Oh, <laughs> from 20 to 50, pretty quick within two to three seconds. Seriously fast, this car. It's comfortable but at the same time firm. I could easily go for a long distance drive in this car, 
definitely. This would be interesting. There's quite a steep hill, if you can see ahead. Now, in my Fiesta ST, I'd have to slam that into second and, you know, rev it quite aggressively to get up the hill. But, like, yeah, I'm going to slow down. There's no one around. And I'm going to punch it. Yeah, that's not holding back. Even though it's enjoyable, that force is enjoyable. What's missing is that, like, noise. It is the noise that you feel, that you can hear, and the build-up of revs. It's, it's exciting. I'd say that's the difference is, like, a petrol engine car, like my car, you know, more performance, is an exciting car to drive. This, this is, like, enjoyable, but fun. It's fun to drive just because it's kind of laughable at how instant that power is. The more I'm doing it, it's kind of becoming a little bit more mundane now, like, you know, I just expect it. But when you first do it, I've never felt anything like it before. You know, it was amazing. But once you do get over that, it's now missing the noise. And I love a petrol engine noise. I love the noise of an engine, even though mine's slower. It's exciting to go through those revs. You feel like you're doing something. This is like playing a computer game in a way because it's just like one pedal. I'm just pressing R2 on my PlayStation remote. You're not rewarded. Whereas driving my car, there's a rewarding feeling when you get those gear changes right. There's a lot of ramblers around here today. Ooh. People are actually in the road. It's like a silent ninja having an electric car with this much power. I'm going for it. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's fast. So I'm going to use my good old reversing camera ridge now. So I'm just keeping an eye on all that. That is good. There's me thinking I'm going to go out for a nice, quiet country drive. And it's full of people. Cause I've been living life right like I could just die any minute. Going for a ride down the side, PCH, country limit. I don't need a guide, all the lights take me where I want to visit. Are you alive? Or just breathing? Flashing red lights, driving at night. Windowless ride, feeling alive. Nothing in sight, forever in flight. Follow those lines, we're making this time. Blurry street lights, work as a guide to memories that we're making tonight. Oh yeah, we're making tonight. Yeah. joined me Monday morning the last leg of the journey in the Mustang Mach-E what a fantastic opportunity this has actually been for me I honestly really do appreciate what Evans House Shaw has actually done for me big thank you to Tom Alice and Paul for letting me lend this car for the weekend and to film it as I wish um, it's just been absolutely brilliant I wanted to end the video as well with a bit of a conclusion and a summary I mean to summarize Am I sad to see this car go back? Do you know what? Yes, I am. Uh, I wasn't 100% when I started off the journey because I thought, I've, you know, I'm, I'm a petrol head. I'm not really sort of a big fan of electric cars. But, uh, and also the elephant in the room that, it, you know, the, it's got the Mustang name and a lot of like Mustang, like owners clubs and stuff probably won't like the fact that this is a full electric car. But what I've done is actually look at this in a different way. I've kind of reviewed it as a car in its own right. I've not really tried to focus on the fact that it's a Mustang, but the car that it is, which is like, you know, a full electric, it's a big, like, family-type car, really. Like, the way we've used it this weekend, you know, yes, I've gone out for drives myself, but also I've had my wife and my son in the car with me, and we've all really enjoyed the car. It is such a nice place to be in, and obviously it's full of cool tech and 
you know, nice materials, and it is just effortless, effortless to drive. And also, like, the, the power of this thing is just incredible. You know, even just, I think I am gonna massively miss that instant torque is just crazy. And it's such a weird thing to sort of feel. You know, if you've driven powerful cars, but if, when, if you haven't driven like a powerful electric car like this, it's just, it, it's effortlessly smooth power. Like, you know, because you don't feel and hear obviously any gear changes, it, it just keeps going. It's like, when is it gonna end? But I've got so used to it now, that I think it's gonna be odd to get back into my analog car of the Mark VI Fiesta ST. I am excited though to get back in my car. I love the noise of that car, you know, and I am gonna keep it forever. The other thing that's gonna be strange to get back into my car is compared to this is I've been using the one pedal drive on here. So that's doing the accelerating and the braking. So I'm gonna go from a car where basically I have just used one pedal, which was very weird to get used to at the beginning. Now I've become so accustomed to and really comfortable using it. And I'm gonna go back into my car, which has got a clutch brake and accelerator pedal. I think the self-drive feature is very cool. Would I use it a lot? Not so much, because I feel like technology like that, it's there to help you rather than just, you know, don't rely on it. I don't think I felt safe enough to just purely leave the car in that mode. Now, staying in the lanes on like the motor angel carriageway was really, really good, but what was a little bit iffy, I felt a little bit unnerved by, was when I saw cars ahead braking and I was like, when's the car gonna break? When's the car gonna break? Now it did feel like it slowed down, but not as much as I think I wanted it to. So occasionally I was a bit like, right, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to, you know, take control. But I've got to say, I feel like I've got like a little bit of a soft spot now for the, as I'm gonna call it, the Mac E, because I think if we were, if we were allowed to keep this car and get rid of our Kia Sportage, hands down, yes, I would. Of course I would. It's got more tech in it, it's really comfortable, it's spacious, it's got fantastic range on it. Like, I could so comfortably go on a really long trip with this car. So yeah, you know, Evans Halshaw, if you've got a Mac E lying around that you just wish to get rid of, then we can part exchange maybe our Kia Sportage in for this. <laughs> And I'm really hoping that this isn't something that's gonna be a once in a lifetime opportunity. I never thought, you know, a couple of years, not even recently, that this is the sort of thing that might happen with the channel where I've been trusted to have a car for the weekend to use and review. It's just amazing, you know, this is, I would love to do more of stuff like this on the channel. I have invested in a little bit more for the channel, especially to do this video. So I bought this like really expensive, like suction mount. It's so durable and brilliant to use. So I've used it a lot for like this vlogging style setup. Please like bear in mind that I am not a big YouTube channel. I am not Car Wow or anything like that or Drive Tribe where they've got a team of people and a massive amount probably of cameras and tech. I've done this as a bit of a one-man band. This has been all done on my own. A couple of little shots have been helped by my wife to hold the camera and do a couple of external shots. But I do think I've been able to capture some good footage and hopefully make a really nice video on my experience with this car. Right, I am soon to pull up at Evans Halshaw in Trafford with the car to hand it back. So, yeah. So it just leaves me again to say a really big thank you to Alice, Tom and Paul for organising this experience, for letting me have this car for the weekend. I really do appreciate it and hopefully maybe more of this to come. Who knows? Comment below if you would like me to be able to produce more videos like this. And if you're new to the channel as well, please feel free to subscribe. It really helps my channel grow. And click the little bell icon to keep up to date with future videos. Thanks everyone for watching and see you again soon. Bye.